Well, good morning again. <laughs> we have the opportunity today to be in God's Word again, and that is a good thing. Uh, today, we're continuing in our series entitled Gather, Grow, Give, and Go. And as we said last week, we talked about the gathered church. Uh, gathering, growing, giving, and going are four activities uh, that we as Christians, as saved people in, uh, in Jesus, uh, should be about. We should be about these things. And so, um, you know, we should be growing in each of these areas. And so, um, just as I said last week, I'll say it again, uh, these are four things that we believe uh, our core values of Grace Bible Church. They're four things that as we grow in Christ, uh, that we should be more and more about every day. And so uh, we could call these a mission statement, a statement of purpose. Uh, you could phrase it however you, you would like. Uh, but these are things that we believe are, are foundational, not just to our church, uh, but any church that's wanting to uh, accurately reflect um, what the Bible has for us. And so um, we, we, we believe in these things uh, as, as eldership, as leadership. Uh, we believe the Bible teaches these things. And uh, we do want to just say that, you know, these are things that uh, we do because we love Jesus, because we're saved. We don't do these things. We don't gather. Uh, we don't grow. We don't give. We don't go to be saved. If that were the case, we could never gather often enough. We couldn't grow fast enough, we couldn't give enough, and we couldn't go often enough to earn our salvation. We can't do that. But because we are saved through the grace of God, through Jesus, we're saved through faith. Uh, we place our faith and trust in Jesus. Uh, he saves us, gives us eternal life, gives us a position as a child of God, an eternity with Him in heaven. Uh, he gives us the Holy Spirit and so many other wonderful things uh, he gives those to us based upon the performance of Jesus Christ on the cross. So, so we do these things not to earn status, not to earn favor, not to earn salvation, not to keep salvation, but we do these things because we love Jesus and we want to be about what he has for us. And so gathering, uh, growing, giving, and going, we believe, uh, is what he would have us to do. So uh, let's just dive right in this morning. We're going to talk about the growing church. And, and so this is the second in our series of messages. If you happen to miss the first one, I'd encourage you to go back to, uh, to YouTube. You can check that out. Uh, gather, grow, give, and go. The growing church. Um, you know, a number of years ago, we had some t-shirts printed up here at Grace Bible. If you've, if you've been here more than 10 years, you may have one somewhere. Stuff's in a uh, drawer or in your rag bag. Um, Ten years is a long time to get life out of a t-shirt. Um, but anyway, uh, th those shirts had a, had a, a tree on the back. And they were black, and it said had this uh, scripture, scripture reference, Second Peter three eighteen. Uh, Second Peter three eighteen, and the verse is this. It says, "But grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ." grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. And, and so we believe that it's a scriptural thing, it's a command, more than just a suggestion, that we grow uh, in, uh, in our spiritual walk, in our Christian life. Uh, you know, many times when we talk about a growing church, you know, we think about increasing attendance, uh, increasing the number of programs that we offer, uh, building new buildings, and, and you know, buying church vans, and and, and expanding in, in a physical uh, sense. Uh, but that's not the type of growing that Peter here is, is talking about. He says very specifically, uh, not that the other type of growth is bad, but he's 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 commanding us to grow uh, in a specific way, and he says that it's in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so how do we do that? Well, when we grow in grace, which we, we do through being in the Word, uh, we begin to uh, get, go past just the elementary doctrine of the gospel, just understanding that we're saved, okay? And we begin to take that gospel, and we begin to be able to apply it in every facet of our lives. The gospel begins to speak to our, con our condition in every relationship. It begins to uh, be a factor in how we do our work during our work day. 
It begins to be a factor in how we parent our children. It begins to be a factor in all of these different areas in our lives as we grow in that grace of Jesus Christ. So we grow in it. It's, it's, it's a very simple truth that Jesus died for me. But, but as I grow in that truth, and I, I begin to learn lots of applications for that truth, okay, in the way that I treat others and in the way that I raise my kids and in the way that I uh, do my work as unto the Lord. And, and so there's lots of applications as we grow in the grace of Jesus Christ. Um, we also grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so there's a command there that we grow, that we learn things, okay? We're in our Bibles, we're, we're reading it, uh, uh, but we're not just absorbing facts, okay? The word for knowledge here that Peter uses is an interesting word, and it means to, to, to learn, but it also means like to learn it like so you can apply it, right? It, it means knowledge that, that, that is experiential knowledge, knowledge that you're doing something with, knowledge that changes your life. And that's the way that we're called to grow. Now, this verse that Peter gives us in 2 Peter 3.18 is part of a, the whole of, of, of a chapter. Uh, and we notice that this sentence starts with the word but. Okay, And, and, and when we see that word but, it's a conjunction. And, and it means that there was something ahead of that. And the something that was ahead of that is different than the something that came after that. Okay, so on this side of the word but, he telling us, he's telling us what we need to do. What do you, what do you think is going to come before that? What we need to not do. Okay, and so if we back up a couple of verses, we see what growing does not look like. Okay, and so let's, let's actually go back in our Bibles, and I'm not going to put this on the screen, but if you, if you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me, uh, I want to look at verse 17. So when, when we fail to grow as Christians uh, individually, um, we see that there's some, some sort of some hallmarks there of what that looks like. Uh, so Peter says in verse 17, uh, he, says, um, he says, Take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. And so there's, there's, uh, there's this idea that when we fail to grow, that, that we can become carried away with people who uh, are practicing sin uh, and sin. And they uh, can carry us away. We can lose our spiritual stability. Uh, and the stability he's talking about there, he's not talking about losing our salvation, but he is talking about losing our witness, losing fellowship uh, with God, uh, missing out on some of the blessings. He's talking about losing our stability in that area. So when we fail to grow, we miss out on those things. We lose our stability and, and we can be carried away. Uh, if we back up a little bit further, we see that another characteristic uh, and this is in verse uh, 15, uh, 16. It, it says that uh, another thing is that immature believers uh, don't have a good handle on the Word of God. And it says uh, the, the ignorant and unstable, okay, ignorant and unstable, so they just don't know a lot. That's what ignorant means. And unstable, so they don't have a firm footing uh, in the Word of God. It says, what do they do? They twist the scriptures to their own destruction. And, and so when we think about immature believers, uh, one of the hallmarks of, of that is that, that they rip verses from context. You know, they may only know a handful of verses, and, uh, and so they use them for everything, even when they don't really apply. So I don't know how many of you have seen Philippians 4.13 plastered you know, on bumper stickers and everything, and uh, people adopt it as their life verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, if you read the rest of that chapter, there's some very specific things that Paul's talking about. It's not anything. Like, I don't, you know, Christ doesn't strengthen me to do anything I might want to do. No, there are some very specific things. So, immature Christians uh, twist scriptures to, to, to kind of fit whatever they have in their mind that they want to do. And so that's, that's not spiritual growth. Uh, so, so Peter's calling us away from that. And he says, he said, let's grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if we back up to verse 14, he says something else very interesting here. Uh, he says, therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, he's talking about the return of Jesus in, in that final judgment. He says, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish. Be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish. 
Uh, if you have the King James Bible there, it says, be, be ye. And I like that word, ye. Uh, ye is like you plural, right? He's talking to all of y'all. <laughs> He's saying to all of y'all who are listening, he says, be diligent. So to be diligent as the worldwide church, be diligent as a local church body, be diligent as Grace Bible Church, and be diligent individually, each of us individually, uh, to, to be found by Christ without spot or blemish. And so um, what he's talking about here is our condition, our fellowship with God. Uh, as saved people, we know that Jesus wiped out our sin on the cross, and, and positionally we are made right with him. But in our day-to-day -day walk, you know, we have the opportunity to pick up spots and blemishes, right? We, we do. We sin. We, we miss the mark. And so this is the type of, of condition he's talking about here. Be diligent, he says, to be found without spot or blemish. Uh, our condition is something that we, that we do have control over. And so he, he's telling us that we need to, uh, to be found in that condition. So how do we do that? How do we grow into that? Well, the Word of God is central in that. We need to be in the Word of God. Consider this, Ephesians 5, 26. Jesus, uh, uh, or Paul writes to, um, he's, here he's talking to husbands about loving their wives, uh, but he mentions this. He said, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her, how? By the washing of water with the Word. It's an interesting phrasing to cleanse the church. Now, Jesus' blood cleanses us from the penalty of sin. But, but what improves our condition? Well, we see here that it's cleansing, okay, removing those spots, removing those blemishes uh, happens through the washing of the water of, with the Word. And, and so there's something cleansing, okay, about, about being in the Word of God, about feeding on its truths, allowing those truths to, to change us, Okay, allowing them to take root in our hearts and change our behavior. Okay, when we do that, right, it, it has a positive, a cleansing effect. Okay, and so we want to submit to that as part of our growth. Cleansing uh, comes through being in the Word of God and responding to that. Um, consider this for a moment. I'll share another verse. Acts uh, chapter 17 and verse 11, we see that uh, 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 Luke writes, that uh, there were Jews, and he's talking about the Jews in Berea. And he said, these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Why? They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. So what was better about the Jews from Berea? Like, what made them be more noble? Well, it was the fact that they received the word with eagerness. Okay, now there's a lot of ways that we can receive the word. We can receive it with apprehension. We can receive it with fear. We can receive it with, uh, it, you know, uh, a lot of different ways. But, but they received it with eagerness. They were eating it up. And, and, and not only uh, eating it up, but, but they were responding to that. Uh, they, were, they were allowing their, their lives to be changed by it. And it says that they were in the scriptures, uh, not yearly, not monthly, not even weekly, but they ran it daily, daily. And so that's uh, so important that we have a regular daily time in the Word. Uh, and it has a growing effect, right? When we're in it daily, we're feeding on those truths, we're allowing Him to change our lives. And so um, we see that growing involves being in the Word of God, but it also involves being receptive to it. Uh, and so we can certainly, we can be in the Word of God for lots of different reasons. Uh, some of us just like facts and information. Some of us just like to read it because it's history. Uh, some of us like to read it, uh, you know, because we're having a hard time going to sleep or something. I don't know. <laughs> but we want to read it with a way that, 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 that we're, we're receiving it uh, as truth and, and we're allowing it to have its effect in our life. So let's talk a little bit about the process of growth. So we know that it involves being in the Word of God, um, but all of us, as we come to faith in Jesus, we start off as, as babies, okay, babies in the faith. Uh, Paul calls us infants in Christ, and, and like babies, okay, we have uh, the need for uh, frequent uh, small doses of, of milk, right? 
Uh, we have the need to have our diaper changed. <laughs> uh, we have the need to, to not have a lot of responsibilities. Uh, uh, and there's an expectation that, that, that we're going to receive a lot of attention, uh, but we're going to grow and we're going to mature into a toddler and into a teenager and into an adult who's contributing and functioning. Uh, so there's, that, there's this process that, that we go through. Uh, spiritually, it's the same way. We start off as spiritual babies. When we come to Christ uh, through uh, the gospel, uh, we receive that, and, and we um, are born again, then, then we start off as a baby. We don't know a lot. We've got a lot to learn, a lot of maturity ahead of us. Um, but unlike physical growth, we can hinder our spiritual growth. Okay, we can pause at a, a baby stage or an infant stage or, or a toddler or, or a teenager. We don't, we don't have to mature uh, spiritually like we do physically. Okay, physically, it just happens naturally, uh, but spiritual maturity takes uh, some effort on our part. And so let's talk about that progression. We're going to talk about some characteristics of, of infants or, or babies, Christians who are uh, immature, uh, we're going to talk about what they need to grow, and then we're going to talk about what it looks like uh, when that growth has, has happened. And so I want to share with you some, some, um, a couple lists here, and I'm totally re recycling these. Okay, I'm borrowing these from a CT class uh, that we have done a number of times here. It's called the Christian Life Study, and we're, uh, we, we reuse that study often uh, by permission. Uh, it was actually put on it was put on for many years by a guy named Gordon Bennett, who's a, a Bible teacher at the uh, Bible Institute, the Ethnos 360 Bible Institute, and he's allowed us to use his study. And I think he summarizes it really well. So I'm just going to share with you his points today, and we'll look at some scripture that, that kind of illustrate the, the growth process. So to start off with, um, he mentions first uh, that Christians, uh, they start off as babies, and they are carnal in their walk. So let's talk about what that means. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, okay, Paul writes this to uh, the church at Corinth. Now, if you know much about the church at Corinth, where were they in their spiritual maturity? It was not too good, right? They were very early, and, and they're very immature. And Paul is, is being very patient with them, but very firm. And he's, he's de demanding that they grow uh, is really what it amounts to. But Paul says this, but I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, meaning adults, uh, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. Uh, in fact, if we go on and read, uh, and I don't, I don't have it on the screen, but if, if we were to read the next verse, he tells us what that looks like. He says, uh, for... While there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? And, and so we see a characteristic of, of baby Christians, and, and we all start this way, is that we start off very carnal in our walk. We follow, uh, we follow emotions, okay? We, we are... Our spiritual lives are characterized by things like that shouldn't be there, like jealousy, strife, uh, following a particular, like a person, okay? And Paul says, that's like, that's behaving in a very human way, like almost like a, a very tribal way, a very, like almost animalistic kind of way. He says, well, you know, you, you guys are lining up behind Paul and you're lining up behind Apollos, like you, you're, 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 you're picking teams and, and there is no team. He's like, you don't, don't do that. That's immature. He said, we're, we're, we're not called to follow Paul or Apollos. We're called to follow Jesus. And so there's no need for this divisions and the, the factions and the infighting and the squabbles. That's immature. He said, we don't need to do that. Uh, and so, uh, but that unfortunately characterizes a lot of us when we first come to Christ and we're learning. Okay, we're just learning. Um, so we'll latch on to a particular Bible teacher, or we'll latch on to a particular thing and, and, and uh, denomination or whatever it might be, and we think that that's, that's it. Um, and, and Paul says, no, we're, we're called to follow Jesus, okay? Not a particular teacher, not a particular denomination. Uh, we're called to follow Jesus. Uh, second thing that uh, Bennett mentions is that, that baby Christians are, are, are lacking skill in the Word of God. 
And so that really um, is evident when we read like Hebrews 5, for example. Um, let me just put that up here. Hebrews 5, verse 11 says this. About this we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you are dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For, for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. And so the author of Hebrews here sounds an awful lot like Paul. <laughs> we just read. Um, he's comparing them to spiritual infants needing uh, milk and not being ready for solid food. And, and when he's referring to the types of food, uh, he's, he's referring to the Word of God. He's referring to the, the milk of the Word, and he's referring to the, the meat of the Word. And, and so when we think about a baby, you know, most of you in here either are parents or you know one, right? All of us know somebody who's a parent. Uh, and when we have babies, those babies are very needy. And when, when they first come out of their mother's womb, I mean, they come out crying and dirty. And they need something like every minute of every day. Uh, and spiritual Christians, or excuse me, baby Christians are the same way. Okay, we need frequent care. We need frequent small doses of digestible truth, okay, from the Word of God. Okay, we need, we need small readings. We need, you know, stuff that we can understand. We need it to be presented in a way that we can latch onto it and, and learn from it. And just like babies, you know, when our kids were little, I remember it was like clockwork every three hours. I mean, it didn't matter if it was day or night. Every three hours, warm up a bottle because they're going to need it. And so that's the way that, that we are spiritually. When, we need, when we're growing in Christ, we need to frequently, very frequently, we need to be in the Word of God, uh, small doses, frequent doses, and, and so that we can grow. And there's no substitute for that. Uh, so anyway, the milk of the Word is important. And hopefully, as we have those frequent digestible doses, you know, we're going to grow, and then we can get into more of the meat of the Word. Uh, but a lot of times as Christians, you know, we want to self-direct our, uh, our spiritual growth, and we jump straight to the meat of the Word, and we try to do studies on eschatology and all these isms and things, and we're really not grounded in the truth of the, of the gospel yet. And it's, it, it makes it really easy for us to get off on a rabbit trail Theologically, when we're not really grounded, we haven't fed on that milk of the word. So we, th we think about uh, baby Christians, carnal, lack skill in the word, uh, emotionally unstable. And by that, uh, I simply mean that, that it's very, very easily manipulated. Uh, baby Christians are very easily manipulated. You know, recently in the news, we saw uh, very close to here was a girl I think she was 14 years old over here in, I believe it was in Denton, uh, who was kidnapped from her home, right? And she was preyed upon by an older guy. I mean, he was like in his 40s, who somehow accessed her through her school computer. And somehow he got on there and was able to manipulate that girl into giving him her address as he's posing as somebody that he's not, right? And she met up with this guy, like and got him to come to her house where he like took her. And like ran off to some other state with her, right? And she was carried off and, and, and she was manipulated, right? Because of her age, because of her youth, her immaturity. She was preyed upon. And, and, and so certainly, I mean, there's a lesson there for all of us as parents. You know, we want to watch out for our kids because they're, they, they haven't seen a lot. They don't know a lot yet. They're not aware of a lot of the evil that's out there. And, and so we have to be protective somewhat. But, but spiritually, you know, the same type of thing happens. You know, we, uh, when we're baby Christians, we're very manipulable. Is that a word? I'm not sure if that's a word. We're manipulable. Uh, we, we're easily manipulated. That's probably what I should say. So, so we, can, we can be preyed upon, and certainly that happens a lot. You know, we see, um, and, and a lot of times we talk about TV preachers, but, you know, a lot of those times, you know, they're preying upon the weak. They're preying upon those who are immature in the faith, who don't know a lot, uh, who, who are not in the care, as we said last week, they're not in the care of a local church body, okay, who, who's looking out for them and who has watch over their souls. They, they're being manipulated. 
Anyway, emotionally immature, uh, unstable. Uh, Ephesians 4 talks a little bit about that, uh, just being tossed back and forth uh, by different doctrines and, and human cunning and craftiness. Uh, moving on, we want to uh, just talk a little bit more about um, some of this growth. Uh, but let me just quickly say, you know, like babies, okay, uh, you know, baby Christians, they kind of have to be handled with care. You know, like children, uh, we lack communication skills. We, you know, throw temper tantrums, communicate with our emotions. Uh, it's hard to, to have a sit-down conversation, you know, when, when kids are little. Um, and, and so um, we just need to be aware of that. So with that being said, though, what do we need to do to grow? So we talked about the, the, the beginning stage. So how do we get from the beginning to where we want to be? Three things. Number one, we need the pure milk of the word. The pure milk of the word. We've, we've talked about it in Hebrews and, and in Corinthians. Uh, the pure milk of the word is really just, again, absorbing the truth of the word of God. There's no substitute for being in the word. We will not grow without it. Uh, we can listen to it. We can read it. Uh, we can, you know, listen to it on a, a, you know, on our phones, or we can sit down with a paper Bible, or we can have an app, or you know, some way we need to interact with that word of God. And we need to hear it, uh, we need to feed on it, and we need to feed on it regularly. Second thing we need to grow from infancy to adulthood is tender, loving care. Paul talks about this in Thessalonians. Uh, Second Thessalonians, uh, in fact, uh, chapter 2, he, he tells us what that looks like. So as we minister to those who are immature in the faith, uh, we want to treat them uh, in this way. Paul says, we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. If you've noticed a, a nursing mother taking care of her children, she gives and she gives and she gives, and she doesn't expect anything in return, uh, not, not during those first stages. But as the child grows into a toddler and in, into a, a teenager, you know, uh, we're starting to expect a little more from them. But at the beginning, no responsibilities. Uh, and, and so Paul says, that's how we were among you. And, and he said that that means that, that, that we came in, we, we didn't uh, puff up your self-esteem, okay? We didn't uh, come in uh, greedy to get anything from you. Uh, we came in not for our own glory, and we didn't put any burden on you. We didn't put any burden on you, not a financial burden, not a, uh, a burden to serve. We didn't do any of that. We simply came in like a nursing mother. Why? because they're new in the faith, and we want them to grow. They're, they're, they need to be about growing. Uh, so the three things that, that Christians need to, to grow, they need the pure milk of the word, tender loving care, and one of the most important things is to avoid the poisoned milk of law-keeping and religion. And so Galatians talks a lot about that. You know, as we talked earlier about being preyed upon, uh, many early uh, b believers, young Christians, are preyed upon, and accept additions to the gospel. They accept additions to the gospel. Galatians is a great example. Uh, Paul came to the Galatians and he said, who has bewitched you? And he goes into this, that, that, that they had not only received the gospel uh, uh, you know, by faith in which they were saved, but they had added to that that a person needed to be circumcised and keep the law. And he said, you're adding to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's poison milk. It's poisonous teaching. You don't add to the gospel. You know, we're saved freely uh, by God's grace through Jesus, through faith uh, in what he did, not by anything that we can add to that. So we're not saved by adding anything uh, to that. And that's what I mean by law keeping. Okay, some the Galatians had, had, had been sold this lie that they had to keep the Jewish law and believe in Jesus if they were going to be saved and go to heaven. Uh, religion, and I use that in quotation marks, religion does that. Religion is, 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 is about what I can do uh, to gain favor with God, and Paul says that is poisonous teaching. Okay, we, don't, we don't want to add anything to the gospel. Okay, so immaturity, here's what we need to grow, and what, how do we know when we've gotten there? Well, just quickly, I'm going to share with you a few things. Um, when we know we're reaching spiritual maturity, when we put away childish things. Um, Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, the love chapter. He said, he said, now, he said, we have faith, hope, and love. These three 
things, they abide. But the greatest of these is love. Love is the motivating factor, not a bunch of rules. I have the responsibility to love. I don't have a bunch of rules. And, and, and when children grow, um, what we see is, is that they start out with a lot of rules and very little responsibility. Okay, think about your, your, your little ones, your toddlers. You know, as soon as they start walking, oh boy, it's, it's on. <laughs> they, start, they, they start getting mobile, and then it's like, don't touch that. Don't put your hand on the stove. Don't stick your finger in that light socket. Don't try to take that bone from the dog. That's not going to end well. Hold my hand while we cross the parking lot. You know, you know what I'm saying? Lots of rules, lots of rules, and they're there for their safety. Uh, not a lot of responsibility. But as they grow, those things, the balance should shift. Very, very few rules, but more responsibility. So when we get to, to, to Jesus talking to his disciples, he said, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. I'm not going to give you a bunch of rules to follow. You know what love looks like. You've been loved by God. I want, I want you to take the responsibility to love one another. Now, what does that look like? You, figure it out. He's like, you, you can figure this out. You know how God loved you. Love one another. High responsibility, low rules. And, and one who is maturing in their faith can, can put away the childish things. They can move from rules to responsibility. Uh, secondly, uh, take res full responsibility for their faith. So Christians who are growing know what they need to do, and they do it. Um, thirdly, they walk by faith. Uh, they trust God. They put less and less trust in man's wisdom, more and more faith in God, uh, more and more patience. Uh, they, they, they trust him. Um, you know, as it says in Habakkuk, it says, uh, the just shall live by faith. Okay, we learn to, to, to do that. We learn to live by faith, to live by faith. Um, as we said earlier, you know, rules go down, responsibility goes up uh, as folks mature. Uh, we don't expect anything of them when they're babies, but as they mature, we expect them to, to do things like gather and grow and give and go. We expect things from them as they grow, um, you know, so we don't expect, you know, a toddler uh, to really do much other than pick up their toys, uh, but the teenager needs to take out the trash and feed the dog and maybe mow the yard, and, you know, we, we expect that to happen, and spiritually, God expects for it to happen as well. Uh, spiritual adults can be depended upon. They're not, um, my word is flaky. Have you ever used that word, flaky? <laughs> when we grow in our faith, we become less flaky, okay? We, we can be depended on. Uh, Paul talks to the Corinthians and to the Galatians, and he said, I have confidence in you, in the Lord, great confidence in you, All right? He was, he was able to trust them that they would follow through. Um, spiritual adults say no to the flesh. Um, they, this verse reference I have here, uh, Paul talks about bringing my flesh into subjection, okay? Saying no to, to things when I know that God wants something better. And then finally, spiritual adults are mature in the faith. They're ready for solid food, okay? They can pick up their Bible and they can read it and for the most part, understand what it says and how to apply that to their life. And so that's really where we're, we're trying to, to move toward. Um, but so often, uh, that process is hindered. And so I just want to talk about that, as, and, and we'll, um, this will probably be the last section that we'll look at today, is just this idea of, of, of what it takes to grow and why don't we. Okay, so um, when we think about the type of growth that God wants in our life, each of us growing personally in our walk, being in the Word, being receptive to it, allowing it to make the change that it, that it needs to make. Um, when it comes right down to it, we don't like change. Okay, people just in general don't like change, especially if that change is substantial. And, and, I'm, and I'm here today, and I know that probably all of you know somebody uh, in your family, maybe a relative, a, a close friend or somebody, who died from a smoking-related disease. I know in my family, I know somebody that died of emphysema because they would not stop smoking. Do y'all know people like this? Like they died of something that they, that had they been willing to make that substantial change, that would have been like choosing life, more years for their life, more joy in their life, more length of life, more time with their children. 
but but life was was coupled with needing to change, right? And, and choosing not to change, which was easier, lead, leads to death. Well, you know, why don't we change if we know we need to change? You know, the statistics are out, and I heard recently the number that was given to me was 80%. 80% of people, when, when choosing life, it, which and with life, a substantial type of change in my lifestyle, if, if that's what it takes to live, 80% of the time I'm going to choose not changing, I'm going to choose death. It's like 80-20 is, is the way that we typically, that, that it falls. It's so, so, so when life requires substantial change, right, I'm not going to do it, typically speaking. And so we, we see a great example of that in the Scripture. When, when God led the Israelites out of Egypt and into the wilderness to, to grow them, Right, he led out a redeemed people. These were saved people, like that were under the blood of the Lamb. Right, they'd all a- applied the blood to the doorposts of their home. God had led them out, parted the sea, fed them the manna, fed, watered them from the rock. They'd all, it, some estimates that there were hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of of Israelites in the desert that God was growing, and He's He's moving in the, them in that direction, demanding that they grow. And he had these wonderful promises for them, but because of their stubbornness and their opposition to the change that he was requiring of them, they chose death. It says this in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 5, it says, with most of them, God was not pleased. And it was their failure to grow, their failure to respond to his teaching, their failure to apply that to their lives. God was not pleased with most of them, Uh, not all of them. There were a couple that were highly spoken of, and there were only two. It was Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb of that generation were the only two who trusted God enough to actually see the benefit of the promises that he had for them. The rest were unwilling to change, and and they were unwilling to, to heed God's word. They were unwilling to grow. They were stubborn in their infancy. With most of them, God was not pleased. And so that's certainly not where we want to be today. We don't want to be a a perpetual baby. Okay, We want to grow. Peter tells us, grow. Grow in the the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's 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 an expected thing. It's a natural thing. It's, It's a thing that's going to lead us into great and wonderful places as we walk with God, if we're willing to be a growing a uh, growing church. Um, and so as we kind of close today, I'll just share these things with you, some thoughts uh, as we think about growing. What do we need to do to grow? Well, I think we've hit on those things today. It involves being in the Word of God. Um, so as we, and I, I guess I don't have a slide for this, uh, but what we need to do to grow in the, in the Word. Uh, first of all, I think it's important that we gather. Okay, as we said last week, there's there's safety, there's protection, there's, there's a, a biblical precedent for us to meet together as a church, to grow together. Uh, there's, there's safety, there's safety in doctrine, there's safety in a lot of those things. Um, and, and so we need to gather, so that's the first thing. Uh, but then we need to grow. We need to grow, and that involves um, being in the Word. So if you're here this morning, you're already taking a step in the right direction. Okay, you're here, we're diving into the Word together. Uh, so that's a plus. Uh, mentioned earlier, CT classes are another great place to dig a little deeper. Okay, today we talked about milk, we talked about solid food. So like if you got like baby formula and you got steak, okay, this morning, this is kind of like mashed potatoes. (laughs) I like mashed potatoes. (laughs) They're good. I think when I get old and I have dentures, I can probably still eat mashed potatoes. It's just kind of easy, right? So, so this is like mashed potatoes, but like CT classes, now that's more like the meat of the word. And so we're diving deep. You know, we're really getting into those deep truths. Uh, so that's another great way to connect with the Word of God. But there's really no substitute. Like the Bereans we read earlier had a daily time in the Word of God, and that was so critical. It's what made them more noble than those at Thessalonica, that daily quiet time uh, in the Word of God. So as we close today, and uh, we'll, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up and, and we'll pray and dismiss well, let's just consider this morning, where are we at in our spiritual growth? And is our spiritual growth, is it stalled because we're not 
feeding on the Word of God and we're not being receptive to it. And so today, let's choose, let's choose the change that leads to life rather than the failing to change that leads to death. And so let's um, consider that this morning. Uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you for not only for the challenge to grow, uh, but that you've equipped us with every resource that we need to grow in our walk with you. Uh, and, and you have coupled that together with such great blessing. Lord, we know that as you grow us, it's, it's, it's for your glory, but it's also for our good. And Lord, we just thank you that you have that prepared for us, that as your children, you love us enough uh, to, to, to lead us in that. And so we thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you for the church. Uh, we thank you for this local church body. Uh, we thank you for the teaching. We thank you for those who are uh, shepherding, uh, those who are um, leading, ministering. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, as we, uh, as we leave today, just encourage you to spend some time with Marcelito and Tegan. Um, so they'll be out in the foyer. Get you a prayer card. There's a spot on your fridge for them. So enjoy. Enjoy.